Good morning, good afternoon, yes sir, good evening, thank you for tuning in to the Restricted Zone Podcast, this is episode 128 of RZP here on YouTube. Tonight is the 2023 season premiere of NFL football, the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, hosting the Detroit Lions, unfortunately, the Chiefs are hosting the Lions tonight and not the Eagles. You know, if that were the case, I'd be at that game most likely tonight, watching them unveil a second Super Bowl banner. But unfortunately, the Eagles did not get it done for a multitude of reasons back in February. So it's the Chiefs with the opener tonight. But it's all good. It's all good because it's a new year. It's a new season. And guess what? We're talking Eagles tonight. So if you're not an Eagles fan, I'm sorry. This might not be the episode for you if you just want to hear you know, just good football discussion. I mean, hey, you can stay around. If not, I mean, love you. You know, make sure, you know, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. But uh, for our Eagles fans tonight, this episode is for you. This episode is for us. And it's just our it's just our second Eagles-only episode so far. We, we I plan on having a lot more throughout the season. I don't know if we're going to do, like, every game, we, every Eagles game. Maybe we can. Maybe we can just, you know, review every single game, but, um, you know, just keep a look out on that. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss that in the future. Let me introduce my host, my co-host for tonight. I'm Jonah Wooten. Johnny, introduce yourself, man. Hello, world. Just Johnny tapping back in again, baby. Just the analyst, not an advocate. Just the analyst, baby. And listen, <laughs> Jonah, you right, brother. If this is just strictly for the locals, for the tri-state, for the whole yes, Delaware Valley, Listen, this this show is for us, right? Listen, Listen the Eagles, Eagles fans anywhere, anywhere like anywhere, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, all the Eagles fans you know on the other side of the planet. So it, if this reaches you, you bleed green, this is for you tonight. So, hey, let's just get into it. We're going to uh, discuss the um, the initial 53-man roster that Nick Sirianni and um, Howie Roseman cooked up for us. After the preseason, after a long summer and training camp and preseason, all that dog days. Yes, bless. We got through it, bro. We got through it. We're here. The regular season is here, man. I love it. We're going to discuss that just, you know, briefly. And the bulk of our episode will be our Eagles regular season predictions. So we're going to go down all 18 weeks, 17 games, and give you our winner for each game. So, Let's get started. Let's get right into it. 53-man roster. I'm going to start with the offense. Um, I'm going to list down position by position, list down, you know, who made the team, and then give you actually your thoughts on it, and then do the defense. And I guess mix the special teams in there, and I do the same thing. And then um, I can mention the practice squad and, you know, certain guys to keep an eye out on throughout the season because, unfortunately, this is the NFL. This football. Injuries happen. They happen. So some of these guys on the practice squad will come in handy for the Eagles this season. So I'm going to ask you who we should keep our eyes on. So that being said, we're going to start the offense. We start at quarterback. Surprise here. Number one, the man, the guy, him, Hemi Neutron. Jalen Hurts is the starting quarterback for the 23-3 season. Woo! Coming fresh That's off of the MVP runner-up season. A this damn close to a Super Bowl winning season, um, a big contract. He is our guy for the future. Backing him up is Locked Marcus Mariota, who had a pretty shaky, pretty shaky uh, summer, pretty shaky yeah. preseason. But the Eagles are staying put with him at number two on the depth chart. And Tanner McKee, shout out to Tanner McKee. Can we six-round draft pick? Six-round draft pick. He's, he's swooping and stole that job from Ian Book. I can't even say steal because Ian Book just played himself right out of it. Um, yeah. With all due respect, he played yeah. himself right out of that job. And Tanner McKee, you know, he, he was very impressive. So, shout-out to him. He stayed consistent, very composed, had a great um, offseason, had a good preseason. I liked a couple of the throws that he made, had a way higher QBR, and I like his decision-making. I, I, I like him for that third spot. And – very underrated. Six-round draft pick. Shout out to him. Definitely right with me. 
Yes, sir. Moving on at running back, we have DeAndre Swift, who was a draft day trade. I don't know if that was. I don't know if it was night one or night two. We made the trade. I think it was to go and get to go and get DeAndre Swift during the draft. A Philly guy went to the high kid. school ball here. Yes, sir. Catholic school ball here in Philadelphia. Also, of course, he went to Georgia, so he's just another one of those dogs. But he's on the offensive side. We got plenty of defensive Let's dogs, go. and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to that. But you know, he, he's one of the few um, offensive dogs. So um, DeAndre Swift, I, I'm assuming he'll be the starting running back. Of course, the Eagles are gonna be running this, you know, by committee. There's no yep. few number one bell cow type of back like a Saquon Barkley or Derrick Henry or Josh mm-hmm. Jacobs. This is gonna be a group effort. And helping him in that, you know, in that effort, Rashad Penny coming over from the Seattle Seahawks in free agency. Um, one of my one year favorite deal. low key names. One of my favorite low key names. Praying to God he stays healthy because when he he can rip, I'm telling you, this guy this guy can run. I mentioned him in a lad we in the segment we had last year of underrated players coming up. Like after like four, five, six weeks of the season, it was him and Kenneth, Kenneth Gamewell. He got hurt. Gamewell continued to take the carries, but I always have my eye on Rashad. I hope he stays healthy. Yes, sir. And behind him, of course, as you mentioned, Kenny Gainwell and the giant killer himself, Boston Scott, who's going to also be doing some kick return duties this season. Moving on at right receiver, we only have four wideouts on a depth chart. Something that uh, stuck out to me quite a bit when I saw the initial 53. Um, But it's a very good four. It's a very good four. A.J. Brown, top five receiver in the National Football League, in my opinion. Devontae Smith, a fringe top ten receiver in the NFL. Future top Future top yeah, Maybe. Future. Mm-hmm. Look, he's only, he's only getting better. He's only, he's only going to continue to get better. At least his numbers are going to look better because he's facing that second cornerback on every team. Absolutely. A question mark this year, someone who is kind of in a make or break type of year right now, Quest Watkins. All right. We yes. know about the Super Bowl yeah. drop. You know about the fumble against the commanders. You know, very frustrating. But when this guy, if he gets out of his head and he just trusts himself on his routes, I'm telling Listen. you, he can be a very, very, very dangerous, deep threat type of guy. And, you know, the Eagles – whether we want to admit it or not, us Eagles fans, you know, Quez Watkins is an important player on this team. Um, and I honestly, and Nick is sold on him, bro. Nick is sold on him. I remember having my doubts um, earlier in the summer. I was wondering because I think, it, like you said, we had a but we it was heavy wide receiver competition outside of Devontae and, a, and AJ. Nobody yes. else was safe. So I mean, I was very interested he made it through to see camp. Him make it. Yeah, for absolutely. good reason. I mean, yes, he's been here for a couple years, but he's been here since yeah. 2020. But, you know, we, I think he's a six-round pick, pick with made it through. You know, Southern Miss guy. And, you know, he, he look, he survived three training camps. So, he's here we'll for We'll see what he does. If he can get out of his own head, like you said, we'll see what he does. Because Nick, Nick Sirianni definitely believes in this guy. So, I'm going to give Quest another shot this year. Absolutely, man. Rounding out the wideouts here on – Oh, by the way, the Eagles have three wideouts in their practice squad. I'm going to get to the practice squad. They have yes. three wideouts yep. there. But the last receiver to make it on to the team, Alameda, Zacchaeus, former Atlanta Falcon. Sneaky pick. I like uh, this yeah. kid. Yeah. He's a, very, he, he's, a, he's a go-getter, a very shifty route runner, and he gets open. If you got Nobody watched Atlanta last year with good reason. But <laughs> this kid gets open. I'm telling he was, you, I'm, I'm he was practically the top wideout in that team last year. Now he Absolutely. gets to come in, no pressure on him. He's fourth on the depth chart. He can kind of just, you know, he'll be what Zach Pascal was for us last year, a guy that you, just, you slide him on third downs. You probably play him in the slot. And, you know, just, you know, nothing yep. is low stress in the NFL. But if there were, there was a low stress position, is that third, is that third down receiver? Just come in, do the job. Get back off. Exactly. Keep the chains moving and let the offenses do their thing. So those are your wideouts. Those are your four wideouts for the Philadelphia Eagles. Tight yes, ends, the last skill position. Dallas mm-hmm. Goddard, of course. You know, of course. Tight end number yeah. one. 
Grant Calcaterra, the draft pick from last year out of Oklahoma. I, 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 I'm interested in seeing what he can do. I'm interested in seeing what he can do. He can't, he kept on. I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher his name. I'm so sorry. Albert I know. I know. He, he, he keeps from so Denver. Sorry. Six I'm gonna learn that name. I'm gonna learn that name. At, we're going to because this kid, listen, six round pick a couple of seasons ago. I think on cut gets, day they made that they made that trade with Denver on yep. cut day for six round pick. Yeah, he gets yep, so, we yeah. get him from yeah, a couple of years ago he was a six, six round pick. Move he gets for the Eagles. Picked up from Denver. Thank you, Denver. We appreciate that. Well, listen, over three seasons, four touchdowns, five hundred and forty six yards, and over fifty four catches. So in the time he's played, gotten on the field, he's made plays. And the time that he's gotten on the field, he's made plays. I like to pick up. Um, we're going to butcher his name for now, but I'm pretty sure. <sighs> I'm going to learn his name. We're going to pick. By week, by week two, by I like week it. two, I promise you, by week two, I'm going to have his name locked down. I'm, after our week two episode, like, I'm just, I'm just going to say his name. Just out of yep. context. Big Al. You'll, 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 Big Al for now. We, we can call him Big Al. That's cool. But I, I, do, wanna okay. know, I do want to learn his name because, you know, that's just important for us to, to get that right. Um, and rounding out the tight end room, Jack Stoll. I'm he sure made he's it being, again. Yeah, he's, he's being kept blocker, around. Bro. Exactly, block. his blocking ability, he's being kept around. So now we move to the O-line, the best unit in football, period. Woo! Best O-line unit in football with the best offensive line coach that we've perhaps ever seen in football. Absolutely. I don't know. That's that's a bold claim, but just Mr. seeing this man's work. Mr. Steichen. his Oh, Steichen, that's the offense coordinator, man. Oh, AC. Oh, oh, I'm tripping. Yeah. The now, line now line. the head coach of the uh, Indianapolis Colts, um, the one coordinator that I, I still respect um, from last year's team. But no, Jeff Stoutland University, man. Stout. Oh yeah, Jeff right. Stoutland. Stoutland University. Chelsea yes, always sir. shouts him out. That or pro- no, is it Lane? Lane Johnson always shouts him out. He went Both to Stoutland them, University. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Jeff. He, he might he might induct Jason Kelsey into the Hall of Fame if Travis doesn't do it. it it'll yeah, probably be stuff. I can see that happen. I so, can see that. Yeah, happen. that's that's just how important he's been to the progression of Jeff, Jason Kelsey's career, and of course Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata, you know, turning a, a project pick into one of the league's best left tackles. He did that, and he's also the run game coordinator. Eagles led the league in rushing yards and touchdowns last year. He is a big reason why. So and he, he and, conti- and he just, and God knows how he's many the one that draws up the run plays. God knows he keeps staying with us, and God knows how many offers he gets from other teams. But he just yeah. oh he could have he could have been like an offensive been. coordinator by now. He could have been a head coach by now. No, he he loves his oh, job and he loves goodness. he loves the organization, and we love him for it. And he should be in, in the Eagles Hall of Fame someday. He mm-hmm. better be. So um, maybe he's his own football chairs. hall of fame. But, you know, without getting too carried away, our nine offensive linemen for this season, starting with the starters, Jordan Mailata, as I mentioned, yeah. Atlanta Dickerson, Jason Kelsey, Cam Jurgens, and Lane Johnson, of course. Your backups, Jack Driscoll, who's sticking around, Fred Johnson, Sua Opeta, and this year's, I believe, second or third round pick out of Alabama, Tyler Steen. We yeah, talked Tom about Steen. him a little bit. In our uh, draft episode, um, yep, a couple months. A little bit ago, excited so. about, a little bit excited about him. And here's my surprise of of that group: Fred Johnson. Can't wait to see what he can bring. Can't wait to see his blocking ability. He made the roster for a reason. And uh, yeah, I like that. We just keep adding depth here. We just get bigger and bigger there, bigger and better. Yep. And we keep getting younger too, low key. Don't let yep. Kelsey and Lane Johnson fool you. We got we got a nice future at the O line spot. Absolutely. And you know they're gonna keep drafting that. They're gonna keep drafting. That that's I mean that's that's, the, that's how it's he's MO right now. It's tradition, though. Trenches, D line, O line. So we're gonna keep getting younger and younger at those positions in the future. So and of course with Stout being here, I'm not saying you can just bring any guy off the street and he can turn them into a star or a serviceable player, but. You know, they have the best opportunity to do that in Philadelphia with Jeff Stalin as your offensive line coach. So, with that being said, um, that's the offense. Um, anything really that just stands out to you? Any, like, big snub on the offense? Uh, I would say – Trey Sermon, I mean. Yeah, I would say tra- the Trey cut 
that he I think he couldn't get over that injuries and after a while, like you said, the, the our system with running back, he probably just didn't fit there like we thought he would. So yeah. him just playing heavy in the last preseason game was just building up his uh tape to go somewhere else. Um that was a surprise cut. And uh Is he picked up on anyone? Nah, not yet. I think he's still on the market. Yeah, I, don't I believe think so. he's still in the market. Yeah. Which is a surprise to me. I mean Absolutely. Oh, and also, uh, what's the name? uh, Greg Ward? I like. Greg uh, Ward. I, I, I was mad. I, I was mad about him not making the team. I was surprised about that. I feel like he had good spurts for us in the time that he got on the field. But like you said, we were just so heavy and crowded at the receiver room, we just had to make a business decision. But and I you think know. he missed the practice squad too. I think he's just yeah. floating around. He's just. And he's nice. I think he. I think he might be on practice squad. We'll, We'll hit that in a second, though. But other than that, yeah, I see where we are. Oh, Mariona, he should have got cut, but I see, I see why we kept him along. Let's just yeah. pray that Jalen don't get hurt. Jalen, don't get hurt, brother. Please, <laughs> all, all, all blessings. Please. You already signed into a August. contract. You, you, you can't cut him because of the dead cap space that would create, you know, on the books. It's just, it's a money issue yeah. with Mariota, so he's unfortunately gonna have to stick around. But um, do not be surprised if Tanner McKee. Ends up being your QB too. I mean, even during maybe the not this. Maybe, <laughs> uh, it depends. Well, hopefully we won't have to figure that out. Yeah, no. I mean, just healthy. be about practice. Just be about practice. <laughs> I don't think they'll embarrass him like that. But I think in everyone, like in like in the coaches' minds, you know, in the back of their heads, you know, they're thinking, you know, t- we, we kind of like this Tanner McKee kid a lot, you know. But we're not going to embarrass yeah. Marcus. He's got the longevity. In the league and whatever, <laughs> so, you know. He was but on the Netflix that's... special for Christ's sakes. Nah, I wouldn't. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever. I'm cool, but other than that, I'm cool with all 24 players on that made or our offense. I'm cool with all 24 on the offense. Love it. So. Love to hear it. So let's move on to the defense. With the, starting with the edge, defensive player of the year candidate Hassan Reddick, Camden boy, Temple wow. legend, Temple Woo. legend Hassan Reddick. You know. A little worried, you know, he's dealing with a thumb injury. He might have a slow start to this year. I feel like we're not going to really see him at his peak form until about week four, week five because of the thumb. But a guy who is, you know, 15 sacks minimum, minimum. Um, that, that's it. That's all that needs to be said. Hassan Reddick, he, he, he changed the league. We have a rule yeah. change because of Hassan Reddick. <laughs> so it should be called the Hassan Reddick rule. 49 are still complaining, you know, Break it what, down. eight, eight, nine months later because they put a tight end on him. Your coach, your good coach, he skied the tight end on Hassan Reddick. Wow. It was a, right it was a four, I, I believe it was a four man rush, too. Yeah. But so, I mean, just, with, come on, bro. We were breaking franchise records. Or, like, Hassan, record. like, Hassan wanted to hurt Brock on purpose. Like, come on. Like, come on, dude. Right like, now. Oh, bow. And then he took out Josh Johnson. The same game. I mean. Look. That was bad. Back in the head. Woo. That I was mean, a nasty whatever. fall. But um, it was a clean um, hit. Um, clean um, hit, um, nasty um, fall. Um, Both his were clean. Both his were clean. And we have a rule change now because of it. Well, <laughs> the Hassan Reddick rule. That's what I'm calling it. The league doesn't have to start that, but in my heart, in, in my head, it's the Hassan Reddick rule. He is your uh, your edge. He is your star on that defensive line, and he's joined by Josh Sweat. Yes, yes. Watch under out contract. For him. Breakout year this year. I'm calling it now. Josh Sweat, we're going to see a lot of that this year. A lot more than last year because he played great in his own right. I think over. It seems over like he always set. just like. Speaking More so than anything, good, right? he's like really def- like dominant against the division. Yeah, like Cowboys, Giants, yeah. Commanders. Like he's at his he best those against guys. the division, which I love. But it's like I want to see that every week because you know in the postseason he was kind of quiet. No, you know, and then Super Bowl he was kind of a non-factor. So, which isn't entirely his fault because you know the turf is slow. No, we're not doing but that. I, but I, 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 but I no, agree, I saw the I saw the footage. They were the, all the edge guys on both teams. They were just slipping. They had no traction. So you know the Chiefs, they were smart. 
they have a smart defensive coordinator who decided to blitz, send guys up the A and B gaps because the edge guys were slipping and sliding. They have no traction trying to get around tackles, so what do you do? You send a blitz up the middle, they can just run straight ahead. But, you know, Mr. Mr. Domestic yeah, about to John say, Gannon didn't want to do that. Lord, so, Lord know. knows our defense couldn't do that for some reason. I was about <sighs> to say that. You know, I, I don't want to. I shouldn't have even brought it up, man. He's on a schedule. It's cool. <laughs> well, and we'll get to that. Reddick. Yes, yes. Sweat. The rookie. The dog. Nolan Smith. Nolan. My pick. Oh, Everyone's he's undersized. Oh, he's, he's underweight. He's undersized. Yeah. Everyone, a lot of people are taking Jalen Carter, and for a good reason, to be defensive rookie of the year. My personal pick, Smith. I'm looking at I'm looking at twelve to fourteen sacks out of this boy. I'm looking at twelve to fourteen. He can stun. You know, he can go. And with that, and a couple of picks, maybe like two interceptions. And but showing like the side at the helm, it ain't crazy. We're showing the side at the helm. It's Listen, not. We we're not drinking Kool Aid here, y'all. He's gonna I, be on the edge. He's gonna be getting. He's gonna be going up against tackles, NFL tackles, and he's gonna be getting sacks. So to get. So I can see him getting under a lot of tackles. He's on, and that east to west run game, that east that that east to west run game, forget about it. He's gonna get yeah. around the edge. Absolutely. You can't, can't run up wait. the middle. You can't run up the middle. You can't run to the sides because he's going he's gonna get after it. So good luck. Ah. Good luck. Eagles legend Brandon Graham, fourth on the on the, BG, uh, on the deck chart. Are you with me? Eagles Let's go legend, again. Eagles Hall of Famer. Fortunately, he probably won't make it into Ken because he just doesn't have enough All Pros or Pro Bowls. But Eagles legend, for absolute sure, and well respected around. He the got league. a ring, though. Oh, absolutely. That's all that really matters to us. Um, Derek Barnett, um, a guy who's actually he's looking to be traded, and the Eagles are open to offers. I'm o- I'm open to, and I oh, believe I'm very, the whole entire trust state is open. I'm very, oh, I'm very Valley open to it. Um, but all due respect, I, I wouldn't miss him. He's coming off a torn Achilles last year. He's he missed the entire season outside of a couple of quarters in that Lions game in the opener. Look, man, and now you're complaining about not getting enough reps. Now you want to, you want to invest. Of course, wanna, he's he's not going to. the trade I mean, market for more reps. Yeah, but former look, first round pick out of Tennessee. He has more ridiculous. personal fouls than sacks. Career ridiculous. personal foul penalties than sacks. His career highlight was picking up the fumble that Brandon Graham forced in, in the Super Bowl on Tom Brady. Which I mean, thank you for that. Will forever be for great. I'll forever be grateful for that. I mean, shoot, play. he got his just due. He got his ring, his Super Bowl bonus. You know, <laughs> but as a first round pick, he's been a complete disappointment. And for somebody who let who broke the didn't he break his school record in sacks? Reggie White. He, he broke Reggie's record at Tennessee. And I think that kind of hurt him because coming to Philadelphia, there was a lot of comparisons. And I'm like, I don't know why we're setting this kid up for failure like that's that. That's what we do. That's what we do. Y'all set him that's up for failure because he's been anything but with right. all due respect to ninety six. He's been anything but sir. Um oh, Lord. Reggie White is Arguably the greatest defensive player of all time, if not Lawrence Taylor. I got his jersey in my closet. Come Arguably on, Arguably the best, if, if you know, if not the second best. So that was we, we set that man up for failure. And rounding out that position, there are edge rushers, Patrick Johnson. So there's your six uh, for the D tackles on the inside. We have seven of them, starting with another dog, Jalen Carter. Let's go. Number ninth pick overall in the National Football League draft this year. Look, we know about the off the field issues. We talked about it in depth in our draft episode, but you know, all of that for right now is behind us. It's just strictly football right now. And a lot of people have this kid as their defensive rookie of the year pick and for good reason. All right. One of his teammates from the twenty twenty one national championship team, Jordan Davis. Year two, look like he slimmed down quite a bit. I see your cat in the background, your furry friend. Oh, you don't gotta block them all. Look, <laughs> I, I got my. He's somewhere around here somewhere. Dog, I'm about to put him in a case. He's trying to get on a podcast. Like, oh, he can he can make a cameo. That's all good. What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> Smokey. He's about Smokey. To sit down. Love it. <laughs> you don't gotta yell at him. 
Oh, Back to oh, Jordan yeah. Davis. Oh, yeah, with the boy. Yes, Jordan Davis, man. High expectations for him? I'm not expecting yeah. him to get after the quarterback, but I'm expecting him to, to, to plug them holes and stop the run. High pressure for him, I tell you that much. And uh, with that being said, like this is his, this is going to be his breakout year, so to speak. Were people expecting this to be his breakout year with him playing behind Fletch and learning and getting a couple reps in as well, showing some signs of life or showing some signs of early potential because he got in and he did clog the hole up in a couple of plays last year. Now he did. I would. I wouldn't say he disappeared. I guess he just hit that rookie ball. Last year, because I guess hurt. as the season progressed, yeah, he, he didn't get hurt. He got hurt, getting hurt also didn't play in his favor. Lower body um, injury. Yeah, I'm looking for a breakout. I am looking. I wouldn't say a lot of pressure on him. I'm looking for him to break out this year, though. I'm, I'm as far as the rep department. I'm definitely looking for more reps. I think Absolutely. he'll get on the field more. So we'll see from Jordan Davis, but I am excited about him as well. Yes, sir. So really quickly, just going to list on the rest. Another Eagles legend, Fletcher Cox. Let's go, Big Fletch. Glad we Going up into the Eagles Hall of Fame. Is the 91 getting retired? Not sure. You know, like Brandon Graham and Lane and Jason, awesome. they candidates. But um, look, Eagles Hall of Fame for sure. Ken, he has a better case. That's, a, that's arguable. That's he has a better case. Um, his prime, like he, it. it's been a while since he's been an all-pro. But in his prime from like those, those career numbers years, add up. Those 2010 years, man, like. And add a ring to it. And add a ring to it. It's got the ring. So um, anything else right now is kind of just, you know, icing on the cake for him. Milton Williams, another sneaky. I like Big Milt. I like under Big the Milt. radar kind of guy. Absolutely. A lot gets of in. Eagles fans should pay more attention to, especially because Eagles love their rotations. We love swapping guys in and out. You know, a third down type of guy can come yeah. in and you know. Make a big contribution. He can get after the quarterback as well, as well as stopping the run. So. I watched him, I watched him on tape a lot last year. And last year, the reason I think people slept on him was because he got a lot of other guys open to make the tackle, and he got a lot of guys open for for sacks. He took yeah, that on come up on the box. a lot of blocking. Mm, absolutely, he did a lot of dirty work, and at the same time, he plugs the hole. He hits that nose tackle. He's not afraid to get in, and you can move him. Like you said, you can switch him around. I like Milton Williams, man. I look for him to step up a little bit this year as well. Absolutely. And rounding out that position, Marlon Tui Pulotu. Yeah, Tui um, Pulotu. Interesting. Tui Pulotu. What's he can do? Yeah, yeah. Moro Ojomo, hook him horns. Ah, let's out go. Out of Texas, six or seven round pick for us in this past draft. Leaf seventh round. And Kentavious Street rounding out that position. Our linebackers, just yeah. three. Just three. Yeah. Well, you know how we feel about our linebackers. I know how I feel about the linebackers, and I also know how they're the stepchildren of the defense. Yeah, and they have been for a long, long time since like the days of like, you know, what I think. Like, I feel Branham, like Trot. Was, yeah, Mary Jeremiah. That's even going further. Not, yeah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Like those dudes, like Trotter, that's... Chris Gokong and, and Stuart Bradley, and you know we always had like serviceable, serviceable linebackers. Like it was always Hendricks. one name, one name. That well, we never like what? Like we never court. had like a star at linebacker. We, we had, had a star at safety. We had an above the average no name linebacker. Maybe I mean the ones that stand out, like you said, Trotter, Nigel Bradham stands out to me. He was pretty capable for us a little bit. He was a star though. He, he was good. Star. Kendrick was, was good. His brother was, was a star. For yeah. a couple years, but Michael, yeah. no, not a star. He Shoot, man, and good. I think, and you know what? I Jordan think we Hicks. actually had a chance. Yeah, Jordan. I miss we Jordan. Actually, I miss him. I'm gonna miss T.J. Edwards. Um, but I think we did take a shot at. We gave up at the linebacker position. I think we did. The, the hardest we ever tried was Kiko Alonso. I think that's the oh, hardest we ever don't tried. Don't mention that name. Don't because, mention that name. And I think don't after that, that name. we just said, forget this, because of the bust he became. Because how you go that name was cursed. season you had in Buffalo? Over a hundred tackles and a couple. Because it's the Eagles, Buffalo. and you, and oh, you traded Lashawn McCoy. You, know, you traded the best running back in franchise history for him. It was never going to work. You remember, remember week one that left-handed pick he got in the end zone, and we oh, thought it was oh beautiful. It, it was worth it. It was beautiful, and, then, and that's but that was I it. I promise you. I promise you, Jonah. After that, after Kiko, we just went back to our old regular scheme. His of, Eagles highlight tape. His Eagles highlight tape began you. and ended with that one interception at Atlanta. 
The Eagles linebacking oh list is historically bad, bro. And Kiko was just another one of them. But I think he's the reason that we just decided to just go back to our regular scheme of not paying that's, attention that's to not the linebacking core, bro. If anything, you, no, should, you should put more, more emphasis on that position. Yeah, well, shoot, yeah, right. Howie probably said, you know what, we're not doing this. I tried something, it didn't work. To get linebackers, we're going to go back that's, to what we That's know. through trade. I mean, he, that's he still trade, neglects bro. them in the draft. I mean, even the Kobe Dean, who's going to get the green dot on the helmet, He's gonna, like the, so he's, yeah, he's gonna get the he's gonna get the plays fed to him. We're trying from, to get uh, the Kobe. Yeah. Sean Desai, Eagles defensive coordinator, will be feeding the plays to him on the field. He has the the mic in his helmet, so obviously, you know they see a lot in him. They trust him. You know another George Dahl. had a four, had a forced fumble in the preseason, didn't he? Yes, he punched that ball and he made up. Uh, he he committed a really dumb penalty on yeah, the way he hit. Yeah, the play before. Yeah, yeah. And he made it right up for it with mental that composure. Ball. I like, I like that. I like that. Offense, that was good. I mean, Mariota couldn't do anything with it, of course, but <laughs> they had to fill position anyway. But it, it, but, it's um, cool. Listen, it, he makes those plays. He'll have a better quarterback that can take advantage this time. Absolutely. You don't gotta worry about that. Yeah. Scooper. Uh, regular season. You are so, right. You are right. The Kobe Dean. Oh yeah. The Kobe Dean, Zach Cunningham, and Christian Ellis are our three. Running back, uh, and I, linebackers. And so, real quick about that. Second, yes, yes. Real, real quick about that. Before we close that out, Christian Ellis, keep an eye out for him. Um, and also, uh, where was it? Oh yeah, linebacker. Um, Zach Cunningham. Cunningham. Yeah. He beat out. How about we sign Nicholas Morrow? He was supposed to be next to Nicobe. Zach Cunningham beat this man out in uh, training camp. I love hard work. Hard work beats talent all day, every day. It and shows. we signed Anthony Morrow to a contract. He he was a starter for Chicago last year. Had over 100 tackles. He was a legit Their piece. leading tackler, I believe. And he gets beat out by Zach Cunningham, also a starter, I believe, for Houston, Texas last year. Lesser team, but still, effort and hard work. I I, I was surprised. I thought I thought we'd be putting it just Morrow goes to show. It just goes to, to uh, show that Kobe. training camp still matters. Absolutely. I'm nothing is guaranteed. Like unless yeah. you wear a C on your jersey, nothing's guaranteed. Or unless yeah, you have unless you're under just, you know, a certain contract, you know, how he gave you money or he took you in the first three rounds. Absolutely. Nothing's guaranteed. So no spots look, guaranteed. Absolutely. Moral moral, he wasn't a draft pick. So nothing's guaranteed. He wasn't an original draft pick here. You know, how he likes to hang on to guys like Davion Taylor and Kayvon Wallace who finally yeah. cut you know, because, you know, they were high draft. That was a tough, know, that's another tough position to beat. That was a tough competition in that, in that room, yeah. too. It, it, it was. Um, but speaking of, you know, guys who show that training camp matters, I'm about to uh, give you his name as I go down the cornerbacks list. Of course, big play, Darius Slay. It ain't Darius, just Slay. Just Slay. Just Slay. Big, Come on. Big play in front if you want to. Why? But because he... Fell off at the end of the year. They just stopped throwing to him. They stopped throwing to his side. Listen, they started listen, kicking on. Other it's a new year. I'm not... And on top of that, I still can't get over the fact that Galladay scored on him, though. It's crazy. <laughs> well, that's I can't first get of all, over two that. things. First of all, let's get one thing. Since we're going through secondaries, the person that blew that coverage is cut. Number one and number two. Let's Turn go. With the, let's not forget who our defensive coordinator was. Oh. Slay is not a zone player, bro. Zane, Slay don't play zone. All right, he's big play for a reason because he's one that, one. That's he like a recurring trail. theme for Eagles cornerback here. Like bombing, Byron Maxwell playing <laughs> zone when they should be up in the guy's face with the hands on him at the line of scrimmage. You use them wrong, man. Oh, got, them, got these boys. Oh, Juan Castillo, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, don't Jesus. hush up. You talk about a name drop. You talk about Kiko. That was a Juan Castillo. Name drop. He was the offensive Castillo. line coach. They move him to the defensive to coordinator. Water, he had right? he had Nambi just playing in the playing bubble coverage like oh. Nambi said I got paid. He did. Nambi said I got paid. Like, Whatever. Those are, you won't those pay are, me to get burnt. That's fine. That was before Chip, man. I was like Andy's last year, I believe, or the year before his last. Yeah. Year. So dark yeah. days, man. Dark days. I still wish he wouldn't. But uh, that. you know it, it worked out for us, so it's all good. It worked out for oh, both course. parties. But, yeah, uh, both of course, you. Slay. Yeah, and James Bradbury coming back, all pro cornerback. Thank you, James Thank Bradbury. you for coming back. I was nervous. A P J B. Thank you, Giants. Were you nervous? I didn't think he was coming back. Did you? Were you nervous? I was. I, was, I didn't think he was. Because I'm like, he's going to test out the market. We lost the Super Bowl. I thought he's, he's going to get big money. 
He's gonna chase the he's gonna chase the bread. All right. We'll take and a he bet. took a bit of a Listen, he took a bit of a pick cut too. The number one cornerback tandem is still in the league. For his for his we value, still, for his value, he took a he took a pick cut to come back here. So clearly he wants to win. Monte yeah. Maddox coming back, 2018 draft pick. Stay healthy, brother. Stay healthy. Oh, please, man. Please. Because the slot corner position is in trouble if he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Thoughts of respect. It's in trouble. But maybe not quite. You know, we got, oh, we got a couple of new faces. We got a couple of new faces. Say his name. Which one? There's a couple of them. But yeah, I'm going to get to that. Josh yep. Joby. I like Josh Joby. I just picked up the show. Keely Ringo. And, um, and p- picked up the show watching in that joint practice with the Browns. Kelly yes. Ringo, a six foot freaking three, six foot four corner. That's just another that's just another dog. Like a tank. Jamming the, people at the line. Love it. He had the clinching pick six in the championship game against Alabama. Let's not forget so, that. He'll always have that. No matter what, he'll always have that. But is, is this the name you're thinking of, Mr. Elias Ricks? The book of Eli. Yes. The man who, look. The man Another who proves, player, right? Another player who proves so. that training camp matters. Undrafted Zach, free agent. Zach Cunningham, Elias Ricks, probably the most Undrafted Elias free agent Ricks. out of Alabama, dealing with injury problems. Six round, you know, right? last year no, in college. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Undrafted. Yeah. Oh, no, undrafted. Undrafted. Right. I, undrafted. I, I, the, I'm sorry. He was the LSU at first, and then he went um, to what's his name before he became undrafted. Alabama, yes, sir. Yeah, he had a heck of a story. He was originally projected top 10 in the draft. Mm-hmm. And then injuries happened, and then he went just completely undrafted. He had, I a think, bad, he, he had a bad last I think he had a bad last year of college as well. Yeah. Uh, as far as, like, uh, passing. How we liked him, though. He saw a big, lengthy uh, corner. Listen here, dog. Throughout the preseason, five passes defended and a 39% opponent passer rating with a pick six to boot. All right? Against Baltimore, yes, sir. All right, come on now. Like, the kid wants to be here. I, I like it. He, he gives me, like, I'm not going to say his game, but his attitude. Jalen Ramsey, attitude-wise, mm-hmm. mindset. I, he's going to talk. He's going to tell you what he's going to do, and he's going to do it, and he's going to tell you he did it. Like, I like this kid's swag. I love guys like that in, in the locker room. Absolutely. As long as they don't run their teammates the wrong way. Moxie. They always come with the But the if they get into your opponent, their opponent's head, I love it. Sometimes that that type of you know outspoken kind of guy can rub locker room to locker room the wrong way, but you keep it strictly on the field against the opponents. You need guys like that on your team, absolutely. So, and Mario Goodrich, he uh, rounds out the cornerback position. Seven corners. Yeah, a lot. But we Very like deep our, position. We did that for Desai because we see what he he works well with young secondaries. Uh, you saw what he did with Seattle last year. Ty Woolen, he turned that kid into a standout. Like not taken away from the player's ability, but he turn is another is another kid that his name is escaping my mind. Last name Jackson, I believe. I forget, but he turned out two two uh, young kids in the secondary, I believe, for Seattle, and they had great years, rookie years, under Sean Desai. So I think that we like gave him that a little bit. See what he could do with that young flock. Sir, man. At safety, moving on into secondary, our last defensive position. You know, probably the second biggest question mark outside of linebacker on this team, but I only say second because, you know, we have two young guys who are, you know, garnering a lot of attention and a lot of hope about it. They beat I'm an Eagles fan, so Ed Reed they, Blankenship. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now, Mr. Just Reed Blankenship. I want to. I want to say it. y'all. White are hilarious, hilarious for that. We're yeah, yeah. Please, <laughs> because we gonna get. I get them cards are gonna get revoked. We keep trying to compare him to Ed. They don't like that. Like <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give him another nickname. But listen, oh, that's, that's how good he was. Actually, but that's how good he was though in 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 preseason. That's how good he was in in, in training camp and those drum practices. That's how good he was. And I'm gonna tell you something. They beat these two young cats. They beat out good players. Like you said, Kayvon gets cut. He was a capable safety for us. Very good tackler. Yeah, and Sidney Brown will be alongside him. Those are your two starting safeties for Philadelphia Eagles. Your third Excited. round pick out of Illinois. Excited. Excited. I believe Excited. he left the Big Ten in interceptions last season. So, yep. Sidney Brown, a guy who hits hard as well. He's a ball hawk. He's a ball hawk. And he hits hard. 
Yes, sir. That's probably one I like him. Say. I just want him. I think this could be coached with him because if watching through the preseason and a little bit of the a couple of practices we've seen, um, I, he's got a yeah, he's rookie. Yeah, yeah, he'll break down better. He's he, he's he's very tenacious, extremely tenacious. But he, I just want him to break down better because he's gonna get hurdled, dude. He keeps diving in the way he does, keeps coming at defenders. He's gonna get scouted and he's gonna get juked or hurdled. Like break down a little bit better, brother. Like that'll that'll come in due time. But as far as the mechanics, they'll get that down pat. But the raw talent is there. The 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 knack for the ball is there. Like I'm excited about this cat, man. I'm excited about her. Absolutely. And I'm not your safety position, Terrell Edmonds, who you signed. Terrell. <laughs> you signed in free agency this past spring. Former Pittsburgh Steeler. Yes, sir. With his brother on the Bron- uh, is a Bill. Yeah, yeah, he's a Bill. Uh, not Justin uh, Edmonds. Not, not uh, something Edmonds. I forget. But they, yeah, he does have a brother. He's a Bill. Ah! Yeah, he is with Buffalo. His name is losing me. But, um. Terrell Edmonds on the squad, and Justin yes, Evans. Sir. All right, those are your four safeties. Blankenship, Brown, Edmonds, Evans. And in special teams, you only have two folks right now. Your kicker, place the kicker, Jake Elliott, Eagles legend for the two biggest kicks of his life. 6-1 yarder against the Giants, of course. And the kick in the Super Bowl that put the Eagles up by eight. Boom! No matter what he does, I mean, he... I will he say... Always, he, for some reason, he always struggles with extra points. Yeah, well, for some uh, reason, you know, it's like got to be kicks. like 30... It's got to be like 40 yards on out, 35 yards right. off in the mix. He, he yo, struggles with short kicks for some reason. I'm not going to lie. You know what's weird, bro? I don't know if it's a good problem to have, but how... Imagine being on a team where you're more nervous after your team scores touchdowns because you're, kick, you're more nervous <laughs> for your kicker's extra points than you are for his game winners and potential go-aheads. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you talk yeah. about backwards. Like, bro, what? Like, how are we nervous about his extra points more than that? But also, speaking of nervous, I will say the only thing with the special teams room, bro, Jake's going to be punting and kicking. I think we got I Rick still don't Lovato. think he's going to be punting. Lovato's Rick Lovato will snapping. be. He'll and be caught it. up for Sunday. He'll be caught up. I he's, think Aaron Sipos. Sipos will be caught up. Sipos yeah, will know, be caught up. Ankle injury set him back, which was weird. But, you know, he seemed to be all right. You know, he had a really cut, good, like, couple of months last. Like, he had a good September and October. Once the weather started getting cold, it's just. Yeah, and it's weird. So I, I was surprised, very surprised about that cut. Jake can punt. I've, we've seen it. Um, Levado belongs. We, we saw it against the, happens, I bro. think against the Giants last year. He actually yeah. had to come in and punt. And it wasn't talk pretty, about, but it was, you know, I got the job done. And we talk about Jalen. God willing, you stay healthy. Maddox, stay healthy. Bro, Jake Elliott, stay healthy, brother. We need you, too. Low key. Well, I mean, he, he got hurt. He got a, I think, I believe a concussion or. Something of that nature, he got hurt, and you know, yeah. Cameron Dicker came in and won a game for them against the Cardinals last year, week five. How about that? So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, feel, I'm, I feel more comfortable finding a replacement kicker than I do a punter because for some yeah. reason, the Eagles went this entire summer and couldn't find a new punter. That was I, weird. I don't understand that. I, I the really punter market is like the fullback that. market. <laughs> Only thing lower than the like, punter market is the fullback market. There's got to be more Australians somewhere who can kind of ball sixty yards. That's where they all keep coming from. At least what's Eagles the, what's punter. What's the salary? What's the salary for a punter? You at Sad least Rocker, clearing, Cam Johnston. I mean, we you, keep you at least clearing two mil. You at least clearing two mil, and that, that's more. Than I know. I know. Jordan knows pay. somebody. Jordan knows. Bro, somebody. real rap. Yeah, for real. Come on, talk I mean, to come on. But they pay more. They love their Australian punters. So. Two mil, bro, as a punter. You at least clearing two mil as a punter. Like, you know what I mean? But I be that as it may, I, I'm comfortable, man. I like it. I like it. I like it going into the schedule. I like this roster. I even, I, I like it. I'm comfortable. We all right. But, it, it's going to be, a, it's going to come down to the coordinators. New offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. Brian Johnson. This, this is John a decide. deck of cards you can work with. Yeah. This is a deck of cards you can work with. Uh, do you want to talk about the uh, practice squad real quick? Yeah, drop it. All right, I'm just many, gonna. Only I'm just gonna. Names I'm gonna list me. all of them. Only a couple names instead of me. Yeah, only a couple names. And just who, who stands out the most? So, yep. of course, Britton Covey, wide receiver, kick return. Weird, weird. Devin Allen. Allen, weird. What's weird about it? Britton Covey, come on now! I thought we had a legit returner. Like, what the kid do? 
Like we're not looking at that for the receiver room, obviously. But we need. Bro, we he, have a. He we got have blown up. Return touchdowns to Josh Huff. And I'm God knows when he played last time he played. And that's a name dropper. You mean pick return, right? Because he had a couple of punt returns. Uh, we had a punt return? Well, the show, uh, Miracle in the Meadowlands 2. I think oh, it's the last no, one. He's going way back. Was that oh, one no. after? I mean, Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles had yeah. a few. Yeah. And, and the giant, the, that the Green Bay game. Killer. Yeah, I know. The original uh, giant killer. For sure. But seriously. Oh, Jalen Rager. Jalen oh, Rager against the wow. against the Packers. The COVID season. Drop. That is the last pup. The COVID season, season, I believe. Yeah. I guess the Packers. Call. That's a pan, y'all. Appreciate you, Jonah. Great Jalen call, Rager. That was his career brother. highlight. Can we reflect on that? that? How about that, right? Wow. How about that? Was that was his career right? highlight. He the got cut, turn. too. Side, sidebar, he got cut. <laughs> Minnesota <laughs> cut him. Minnesota cut him. <laughs> Uh, Eddie, you know the, but X, yeah, the XFL. I'm, I'm the XFL. Yeah. They'll they'll know some guys. You know they can call Carson and Jim. Canadian. You know. Canadian. <laughs> they need a couple guys over there. I'm hey, sure. Bro. So he'll get scooped up by one of those teams. Um, yeah. Britton Covey, Devin Allen, another would, yeah, guy who could have been a return man for us. Um, Makai Garner, cornerback, guard like Julian Good Jones, defensive end Taron John Jer- uh, Excuse me, Taron Jackson, linebacker. Kyron Johnson, I'm thinking of Johnson. Uh, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tyron. Taron Jackson, Kyron Johnson, safety Tristan McCollum, wide receiver, another receiver Joseph Nada. Uh, I believe one I of was your personal another sn- a snob. Oh, you kidding me? We don't watch personal? preseason. Yeah. Nobody watches preseason. We're tr- we're, we're sports. I watch a little bit, gentlemen. That's why we. That's why. Listen. That's why y'all on the restricted zone because we geek it out. We watch everything just a little bit. And just the, a little. The few, the few spots that I, I saw a catch that this young man made in the back of the end zone, one of those preseason games, his foot was out of bounds to the ref called it back. But I'm just telling you, this kid, like, I think I forgot one of the Eagles players compared him to, like, his, his physical nature. He's yeah. a bigger version of AJ, not the skill set, but the bit, but the physical mechanics, like the height, weight. He's built like AJ Brown. And the kid was just a baller in college. Like, I, I really hope he gets called up. But we kept him on the practice squad just because we didn't want nobody else claiming him. A snub right there. Very surprised oh, at that. He, he cleared waivers. He survived waivers. Yeah, bro. Um, yeah, I'm glad about that. Absolutely. Tight end, uh, Brady Russell. This guy we just mentioned. Aaron Sipfoster, yeah. punter. He's on the yeah. practice squad. So, of course, he'll be called up. What's up with that? They're going to need a punter. What's up with that? Don't know. And, I guess it's cheaper uh, to Peckle. keep him that way, right? <laughs> I suppose. He's cheap either way. Yeah, punter. It's a punter. <laughs> Brett Toff, uh, tackle. He rounds out yeah. your practice squad, the eleven man. So, of those eleven, outside of Aaron Sipos, because I, I believe by default he'll be the most important. Yeah, yeah, he's the only guy who doesn't have a player at his position on the depth chart right now. So, mm-hmm. outside of him, um, any of these, you know, um, uh, receivers. There's a couple of them. Got a tight end in there. Yeah, um, like up. I said, Devin Allen, the burner. I liked him. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of. Return I thought he will, I thought he would have made the initial 53 as a kick returner. But I guess I, and, and I and I he only took four years. Years. Yeah, bro, that's my darn. That's my darn theme with this with this whole off season preseason thing. I was looking at the special teams. And it was circle because I I I'm set, I want home run hitters. I want players. I want, but bro, that Super Bowl. What if what if what if Kadarius Tony hit his back for a fifty yard puff return or something like that? We need it's that. Of, it's because of Sip Boss hitting the line no. drive. We need that though. Like yeah, we well, do. We need Sip Boss hitting the line drive. We don't need Sip Boss. We need. I'm telling you, but we need a, a returner. And so, and I'm telling you, Devin Allen, Britton Covey. Um, I, I, I like these guys. I think I, I'm not. I think Greg Ward almost was on the practice squad, but he, he finally dropped. Right, this is a this is a franchise he had that has had Brian protection. Mitchell returning kicks, Brian Westbrook returning kicks, yes. Sean Jackson returning Sean kicks, Jackson. Darren Sproles returning kicks, Josh Absolutely. Huff before he was Josh you know, Huff decided to be an idiot and get course. arrested, and you know we had him returning kicks. I mean, we've had a lot of good. We tried, man. We've been trying over the we've years. Been trying, it's just. We've been, We've been trying. So, I mean, shoot, even to the return thing, even with though he, we, it's not practice squad related, but we did bring, we did sign Isaiah Rogers from ex-Colts cornerback. 
he's a special teams burner. Um, he'll be a stash right guy. Now. Yeah, he'll, he's suspended right now. He'll play next yeah. year. Uh, yeah, can't mess Hitting them parlays, you know. Can't mess that fan duel, man. Ask Calvary. Gotta get somebody, you got to get somebody to do it for you, man. You gotta yeah, bro. <laughs> play parlays for you. And, you Come know, on, just now. pay them Come and then they play. They... So how to do it. But, yeah, but, yeah. Um, Those are the stand. I wouldn't say. Was that him or was it or those Lions players who was doing it on team facilities? They were doing it on team facilities. Like on team facilities. grounds. Like, just... Yeah, bro. Look, like, I, I'm a degenerate. Game. I am a fellow gambling degenerate, okay? <laughs> I got I'm two not in tonight. <laughs> I'm waiting for Sunday. I'm going to wait for Sunday. But, Come on, boy. You know, I'm going to say ground scored already. Thank you. On team grounds? Like, Jesus, man. That's... Yeah, that's weird. But... Be that as it may, we'll have a bet next year so we can add maybe more return He's potential. But, player. Yes, sir. And up, but other than that, like with the with the, with the practice squad, I'm just uh, up with no standouts. Nada, Devin Allen, um, and Sipos, man, uh, and Britton Covey. Other than that, like got, keep your head up. I hope they keep their head up. Like you said, it's NFL. Never know when the next man might get called up. But if God forbid it happens, but I do like these guys that are waiting. Behind closed doors. Yes, sir. So let's get to the schedule. Um, this was supposed to be the bulk of the episode, but it ended up being the roster because we always go over yeah. on these things. I, I knew we, we would. Do, bro. I knew we would. We're, we're geeks, man. We we love it. We love it. I knew we would, but that's fine for. because look, that's look, that's the whole team. So you better get to to learning those names. We know the 20. we know the big hitters. We know the big hitters, but get to know some of those names. Absolutely. You know, and y'all, and, and not, they're going to make you waiting in the wings. 27 defenders, 24 people on offense. We set, baby. That's a roster. And two specialists. So there you two go. Two specialists. <laughs> so let's get into the schedule. Or I'm just going to try not to go in depth on every game. I just want to. Yes. I also don't want you to just like, like just run a loss. Like you can give a couple sentences, but you know, just for time's sake. So we'll, we'll get right into it yeah, this sure. Sunday in a couple of days. Also, just a few notes um, on the schedule. The Eagles sort of, I believe, the third year in a row, or at least at least the third year in a row, if not longer. They're starting the season on the road, which I personally hate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Detroit last year and on the road. Year. And Atlanta yeah, before. Atlanta the year yeah. before. Word. 2020 was a blur. Uh, I don't remember 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. 2019 was at home against uh, formerly the Redskins, now the Actually, I, mean, I think they were the football team at that time. Not a, oh, yeah, they were WFT. Yep, yeah, yeah. The law the yeah. lawsuits were building up at that time. <laughs> you know, Deshaun Jackson catching those two bombs in the second half from Carson Wentz of all people. Woo! Carson Wentz throwing bombs to Deshaun Jackson. Throwing spurt. He had spurts, didn't he? Carson oh, had what, spurts, man. What a time. What a time. So, you know, hopefully they can begin the season next year in 2024 at home on a Thursday night. Give us some love. We shall see. We shall see. But for now, they're on the road for another year at New England, 425. One of six, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Six 425 Sunday games. I they have a 430 game that. against you. You are? Yeah, I work. I, I work at night. Like, you know, I work at like you fair know, enough. In the afternoon. Fair yeah, enough. Me personally, I don't work on the weekends. I'm off. I work Monday through Friday. I'm off from the you weekends. You can come on, Jonah. I, I love, love one of the games. Those are the game of the week, though. Game of the week to the four people. I know. I know what it means. I know what it represents. Like, I know what it. You know what it represents. It means your team is good. You're on the national game. You have five primetime games: two Mondays, two Sunday nights, and one Thursday night. But 425, it's like, oh, I got to wait for three hours, already. man. Bro, yeah, it's more like, time to tailgate, baby. You know what we're That's more time for me to drink, and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. And I, 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 like to eat for the, I like to eat for the game. So it's like, now I got to sit here and just wait an extra three hours to eat food. Uh, Are you kidding I'm, me? Re- listen, recheck your problem. For the people who know me personally, you know I'm superstitious. I don't like to eat until kickoff. I oh, try cool. not to eat. Look, I'm, I'm super. Your rhythm's not going to be disrupted. You can still eat before pregame. I'm no, super superstitious, man. I like to eat at kickoff. Snacks, when the though, kicker the puts his toe, his big corn on the ball. All right. 
Well, what, what about I take snacks? My first bite. You, you told you I'm going to have to. Snacks. I'm going to have to like snack on some uh, chips. There you go. Snacks or something. You want to snack That's what tailgating for, boy. Come some on pretzels, side, baby. We had some pretzels, cake. maybe. I mean, <laughs> dang. And then you got Jordan, another you're gonna be on your man cave couch. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I know. I might be out for every game, man. I'm gonna be at the bar. Yeah, let's I'm go. head up to uh, casino, man. Live casino. Head up some friends' houses, you know, see what's Sounds going good. on. Um, but they have another 405 start. It's a local. It's a one o'clock game over there in L.A. But since it's West Coast, it's 405 for us. So I don't yeah. count that. But it is a four o'clock start and 430 against the Giants on Christmas Day. But that's not on the Sunday. It's Christmas. It's a special day. It's whatever. So I'm cool with that. But. <clears throat> A lot of 425 starts, a lot of games of the week, which is which is good because it means your team is good. I'll take the respect. The league respects you, but it's – and they also have um, the extra road game this year because of, you know, how the schedule is, the 17th game. 17. So they have nine road games, eight home games. Next year, it'll be flipped. They'll be have nine home games, eight road games. Eight road games. So, also, one last note, three 1 o'clock starts. Insane. They it, 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 just, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Like as a I'm kid, as a kid, I hated the one o'clock slot because, like, oh, I mean, I like getting the four twenty-five games because it means our team is good. But now, as an adult, it's like I hate waiting. So it's like, <laughs> now I oh now God. I hate now I hate the late su- the afternoon games. But three one o'clock what? starts. The first it's one is like one of the West Coast, and two of them will be okay. Commanders games. So the Commanders will get two of the three. The Cardinals have the third. I'm sure week 18 will be the fourth, but it's to be mm-hmm. announced. They haven't announced the time for that game yet. But let's get into it. Patriots, week one, Bill Belichick, Mac Jones. How do you how do you feel this? How do you feel we'll do to start the well, campaign? Well, I tell you this, and I tell you this now. I think well, I, for for sure, for sure we win. But I'm gonna tell you this now. <laughs> we need to watch out. All right, because of the it'll be a little closer. It's Tom Brady Day. It'll be Tom Brady Day on that week. Don't mean nothing to me. I know. I know. I know. He's getting. Is he getting a number retired? I think. This is this. uh, Yeah. Well, shoot, man. What about Tom? If you ask me, but that's neither here nor there. That's not for me to speak on. I'm telling you that they're going to be gassed. First quarter is going to be all emotion. Uh, look out. I mean, they got a couple of standouts that I I like. Man, I'm a fan of Matthew Judon on defense. Ahmad Stevenson, uh, I'm a fan of him as a running back. Um, Mac Jones, them cutting their uh, their backup quarterbacks and just going in with him against a front four of yeah, no, our I mean, magnitude guy, was but, very, yeah. very. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I've never been one to question Belichick. But at the end of the day, I got us dominating the front uh, on our front line. Um, they lost the right I, tackle I say, as well. Yeah. I, uh, the, I say we're we're gonna like Mac beware, bro. Mac beware. I see our defense has a very good day. They set the tone early. I won't be surprised if we lead off with our defense if we get the coin toss. Um, offense. I say we. We'll see where we at on offense because I want. I, I feel, feel like, like the offense is to gonna be. It's gonna come football. out slow. I feel like you the were, offense I, will I, be I, a think, bit rusty, but the defense yeah. is gonna shine. Yep, absolutely. We, I, think I think we're gonna get a defensive it's, touchdown. We're gonna get I like a defensive touchdown. Yeah, on it's gonna be a lot of a lot of pressure. It's gonna be a long day for them on the offensive line. Mac Jones, unless he can get the ball out quick, but with our secondary, I, I'm very confident. I think our defense spurs us to this week one win. Yes, sir. I love it. Week two is a is a quick turnaround. It's a home opener for the second year in a row. It's the Vikings in week two on prime time, but instead of Monday night, this time it is Thursday night. Do we see the same type of result happen in a 24-7 type of game, or will this be, you know, a popcorn type of game? Well, I'll tell you this now. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, they're going to set it up for a popcorn type of game, um, especially because of the type, the way that Darius Slay and Justin Jefferson battled it out last year. So on that's a prime time night. Rematch. So it's going to be a good rematch that's going to be promoted. Um I think what it's going to come down to is quarterback play in this one. I think this one is going to come down to quarterback play. I believe Jalen gets the Kirk upper hand. Time. Absolutely. I think, and, and honestly, I think Jalen gets the upper hand. I've never been one to trust Kirk on primetime. We talk about it every single season. Um, I like <laughs> or for, week Or 425 for that matter. Yeah, bro. Like, And that counts as the primetime. It's game of the week. Kirk doesn't really play the best, but honestly, I think I, the, way this, the, way the, mag, the way the style of this game is going to go, it's going to go run heavy, 
It's I, I'm not going to say it's going to be a battle of defenses too much, but I think the Eagles come out on this one based off of quarterback play. Justin Jefferson does get his, though. I will say we, we're going to just have to put our mouthpiece piece in for that. Um, I think they better him. They don't scheme him. I think they scheme him up a little bit better. They're not going to want to match him up with Slay as much. They'll probably scheme him a little bit more. That's going to spew him to get open. And, you know, Justin Jefferson's going to be him, but I don't think it's going to be a match. I like it. I like the birds, baby. I like it going to and over with this one. Listen, I, I'm telling you right now, um, before we can take, like, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. You know, do your thing. I'm not gonna predict winners week to week just for time's sake. But I'm just telling you right now on paper because you know the NFL is is wacky and it's any given Sunday and nothing is guaranteed. Everything is earned. But on paper, these these guys should start eight and up. Yeah, they should. I'm, so and on I'm, and paper, I'm like, man, and I'm like, they're telling me, and I'm saying injuries be damned. The Injuries be damned. They should out, start 8 0 with a and couple it's of. Only, it's going to be tough with a couple of these games. But and I, on I was waiting paper, for you to, and I was waiting for you to get down the list, and I was going to name them. To start I, I, but I 110% agree. I'm telling Even you. Even that week six game, I don't nah. give a damn who the quarterback is. Yeah. It's about history. And we'll Absolutely. get to that. But uh, week three, Buccaneers. The Tomless. Buccaneers on Monday Night Football. The Eagles are going to be extra rested because they're going to have Thursday night. So it's basically a mini bye week for the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So mini bye week. It is on the road, but it's Baker Mayfield at quarterback. It ain't Tom Brady. So <laughs> mm-hmm. need I say anymore? I mean, need I, I say anymore? B- Baker ain't one to take too lightly. I mean, this is a man who just won. And I love Mike Evans and, Evans and I love Chris Godwin. But it's, it's, Mike Evans might be on the trade block, man. But I'm telling you, Bake, don't sleep on him too much. This cat, remember, he came off, he got traded in two days, still freaking won a football game. Like, I ain't gonna lie. He I respect got traded, it. Like, he's an he's NFL traded. quarterback, but he's not yeah, Tom. Bro, I mean, he's like, but at, the, but at the same time, like I said before, our secondary is one not to be fooled with. Sean Desai, he's got a reason to prove. I see we're, we're way more aggressive. We hit him with blitz packages. We force him. We put pressure on him. Like, we, I say we stuff the run. Mike Evans, now, I don't know what his situation is going to be by that time, if he's still with Tampa, because they're not going to let this guy go no matter what, and he'll probably play. Um, be that as it may, Mike Evans will probably have to worry about him. Absolutely. There's always one stand out in the run game. You never know how schemes go, like you said. But this should be a win for our Eagles as well. This should be a win. Right. And now they're going to be on a short week coming back home. It's their first 1 o'clock game of the season. I will be in the lots for that game. I'm going to be in the lots. Because <laughs> oh. it's 1 o'clock, you know, for the – I mean, I guess I'll be in the lots for week two as well. But I'll be you up early be in the morning. They better catch you in the lot for them 4.30 games. It's a, it's, a, it's a Thursday night game, though, so I'll be, coming, I'll be getting off to work, and I don't know if I have enough time, but we'll see. Oh, shoot, I'll man. I'm, I'm tailgating Thursday. Well, we'll see. I mean, I'll probably, if I do go to that game, I'll just go straight there. I won't be able to tailgate. No. But for this game, I'll be in the lots. With, Come with on. Folks. Yes, sir. Tailgating. Commanders, first NFC East game of the season, week four. We get our lick back. Yes. We get our lick back. I'm still not over the game. Yeah. We won the NFC Championship, and I'm still not over that game. Absolutely. We, well, it's a Week 10 Monday Night Football. I'm still not over that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm still not over that. I'm it's still the, the, I'm, that. Not, I'm not going to blame it on the refs or that BS flag call at the end. Roughing the Taylor pass. Heineke fist pumping like he won a playoff game. Like, like what, bro? Like, you're not that oh, good, man. He celebrated the flag. This year? Sam Howe, whatever. Sam man. Howe. I'm good. not moved. I think Heineke's I'm, backing up uh, somebody else. Yeah, huh? he's not even he's, he's gone. Yeah, he's backing up somebody somewhere. I don't give a damn. About some that. young, some young QB. <laughs> no, but we get our look back, baby. We get our look I'm back. John Dotson. I'm a I'm a Dotson fan. Like Terry, I like Terry. Terry. Terry's but, gonna um, get his. Terry's gonna Dotson, get his. Dotson's a touchdown. But he's not gonna. He's not enough. It's not enough. Yeah, coming into a second year, John Dotson coming into a second year. But at the end of the day, we're home. We get our look back. All right. That's you know, that. Brian Robinson Jr., great story and all him coming back from his, yeah. you know, yeah, his they situation. Yeah, that but... was scary. That was scary. Shot twice. No, and then that, that two-man back, running back. Like that same year, too. Jeez, oh, yeah, just yeah, he, midway through the got, season. That was, cool that was a cool entrance. That was a cool entrance. Oh, man, yeah. The that was cool. 
That was cold. I like that. That was cold. I like that. But um, you know, it's all due respect, it ain't gonna be enough. Uh, week five, a little tricky because they're flying across the country, uh, going to the L.A. Rams. I think it's their first time playing in this stadium. So far. Oh yeah, the new, the new. I think it's their first time playing that so far. So that should be yeah. interesting. You know, the Rams. They, we'll they see just, what they. They're supposed it, to it felt like they sold their souls for that right Yeah, loot yeah, they finished Ramsey, last place. It, it, this is what happens when you sell out and you don't rebuild for the future. Like they're supposed to be good, but no, when you don't rebuild and you sell out, this is what happens three, four years, five years later. Look where we are now with the it was, it was only one year later. <laughs> it, it, it only took them one year. And it just kept festering. It just kept festering. Do you dude. think it like, gets they, worse? They, Do you think you know Aaron Donald's on that trade block? They 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 turn it down. A, they turn it around eventually, but not this year. Aaron Donald's on his way out. Um, Can I make a sure. prediction? Can I make it? Go ahead. I, I think Aaron Donald's an eagle at the deadline. What? I think he's an eagle. I think we give up a second round pick. We give up our Saints second rounder. Ooh. And AD is an eagle at the deadline. Yeah, that is a pipe cool. dream. That is a pipe dream. I'm, well, know, I'm just, listen, I just wanted to make that be known. It's listen, a pipe dream. It's my personal listen. pipe dream. And we we'll might be, not we'll even need more. to make that move, but it's a pipe dream. If you want to win a Super Bowl, it's a second round pick. You, you worry about the cap space later. I like to win a Super Bowl. Mix. I Don't like a Super Bowl. Aaron Donald and Jalen Carter and, and all oh my it's Jesus. Been, it's the it's the it's the Indomitian Sue and the Limbaugh Joseph move but, last year all over again. Just 10. way better. Yeah, exactly. It's to take those two guys and merge them into one and much younger and, then, and better. And then, and, and then add like steroids and crack. You have Aaron Donald. <laughs> <laughs> that man, that's all natural, man. It's hard to believe, but that sure. that man, that yeah. So so yeah, no. I would say. I mean, Cooper Cup is back, but he's he's, yeah, still, he's hurt see. again. Cooper Cup, I don't know. I'm not moved by the Rams. I think they finished. And last. like you said, it's any given Throw Sunday. The Cardinals that are, NFC West. I take it. I'll take. I'll say five and zero oh, because I the Cardinals can't are absolutely reason to be scared. Water, so they, they I can't, The Rams yeah. don't finish last, but I don't think they make the playoffs. Either. Yeah, I'd say five and zero oh against against LA. I say five, a little closer uh, though than yeah. people might think. It'll be yeah. close. It, it won't be fun. Yeah, or easy. But then again, you know, they don't have strong home field advantage there. Opposing fan bases take that stadium over every week. So, Eagles fans, their first chance to visit that stadium, getting to go to SoCal, I think they're going to take that stadium over. But I still think the game will be closer than we expect. It'll be like that Chargers game back in 2017. You remember that? I remember that game. Yeah, that was, the, that was like, that went down. Where like Garrett Blunt just went, like just, four he just went four. off that game. Yeah, that was that. And game. it was like the Smash Eagles fans World. took over that stadium because everybody was taking over that little stadium. That was a stadium, lot of you know? fa- a lot of but we traveled, we loved like that, that the whole yeah. stadium was Eagles fans. LA, Every team just Philly runs different. But the Chargers kept it players. close. It was a game that the Eagles should have blown them out, but the Chargers yeah. kept it close. They hung but around. But that's and made it. I feel like I get those same vibes. That's same that's time of the is, year, bro. same part of the country, different teams. It's just, and the last time we played the Rams, uh it was a close game. Came down to the wire. I think it was like a pass interference that saved us. <laughs> and that was a taunting play. I believe that. That was the game Nick Foles came in. It was a taunting play. I think uh I think we played like I think we played out. them the year after. Oh yeah, oh home, yeah. Okay. 2019. All right. All right. I, I think that's the last time it's been a long time since they played the Rams. Yeah. The They'll get up the playoffs. Because we never we've game. never had like the same record, you know, in the division. Like we never finished in the same spot in the division. We shut down so, Austin Eckler, we'll be all right. Shut down Austin Eckler, we'll be all right. Since we're playing the NFC West, it's, we'll play the Rams, guaranteed. But we haven't yep. played them since because, you know, we haven't finished in the same spot in the, in the division. But nevertheless, week six, and this is the game I was talking about, week six is a game on paper that is going to be, you know, everyone's going to think, you know, is a game that we might lose. It might be our first loss. It's New York Jets. And it's because of who's that quarterback. I'm scared. Of and it. all the pieces around, I mean, look, the Jets, they ain't your daddy's Jets. This is going to be a good team. I think the Jets curse, it, it, like, I don't think Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that's 
Yeah. And that defense. Quarterback graveyard, so to speak, is starting to become not up in Cleveland. That's like the, the no name quarterback graveyard. It's been like Jets. And I mean, so, like, look, I'm scared if we. And that's a fun defense. It's a fun looking defense, and I like Robert Sala. Like, he's a good head coach. Yeah, come Saturday. Great speaker. But I'm, I'm not moved by the Jets, and you want to know why? Because history. I mentioned it. History. The Jets have never beaten the Eagles ever, 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 ever. I think the Eagles are 12 and 0 all time against the Jets. In oh the season. yeah, they're right. 12 and 0. I don't think that ends. Just they used to be our, they they used to be our practice squad though. Shoot, in, in the training camp, they used to be our joint practice. Punch no, we, we we play them in the preseason, you know, every year except for this year. I mean, this, this is like <laughs> the last time. Like this is like the first yes, time because that, like, they're yeah, because they're projected to be good this year. <laughs> yeah, of course. But um, that point. but I mean, if we do lose, it'll be this one. It'll be a dog fight to the end. I don't wouldn't be surprised if we lost. I don't think we, we do because we, history is on I our think, side. Yeah, we beat Rod, we beat Aaron Rodgers last time we played him, so he might have a little bone to pick with us. Might yeah, have last year. Home. Might have, might have he was dealing with it. He, he was dealing with his injuries, but I mean, we yeah. And I, I mean, he was in the first half, you know, until it, you know, Ed Reed Blankenship swooped in like a torpedo and picked him off. You know, he was he was on his <laughs> game outside of that interception. So, and then he got hurt, and then he was just like he's just like a dead duck out there. And today they had to pull him for uh, Jordan Love. So, Obviously. listen, history's on our side, 6-0. and All right. Now, up next, week seven is a game that's going to be near and dear to my heart for two big reasons. One, it's on my birthday. Sunday Night Football, oh, on my boy. birthday, October 22nd. I'll be there. I can't miss that game for anything. I will be there. And for number two, it's the return, the return of the Kelly Green uniforms. Think about that. <gasps> Look at that These hat. bad boys. Look at that hat. Yeah. These bad boys. That logo. That logo will be on the shoulder pads. But I, I believe in white. It'll be like the, that eagle, but in white. And come on, boys. Kelly Green's Sunday Night Football on my birthday. Schedule makers love me. The schedule makers love me. <laughs> Eagles, they know, they know Dolphins, Tua, Hurts, Alabama, Alabama, Sunday Night Football. Assuming two is healthy, I'm praying they're, they're both healthy because we need that matchup at full Oh, strength. my goodness. It's so many matchups to talk about. Tyreek Hill versus Slay. And two Waddle and against Jaylen, Waddle and Bradbury. Jalen and Bradbury. Are you kidding me? Waddle and Bradbury. Like, yeah, for sure, bro. Like, that's going to be a firework matchup. Like, 35 to 31 time. type of game, man. South Beach is coming to Philly. And we're going to show them how we rock up here. South and Beach Jaylen, South Broad. And Jalen, <laughs> prove, that you, prove that you're better, Jalen. We believe it. I'm a you know it. I know it. We know it. The American me personally. Know it. Me personally. I mean, I mean, prove it. Come on, boy. Like, come on. They're, they're like, this is going to be popping. This That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. I'd say that's a toss-up. Don't get me to bet. Two was better in college, but, but this ain't college no more. This ain't Bama no more. I'd say I give us, I give us because we're home, I give us six and one. Put it for a win, because mind you, my loss came to the Jets, so we get to back the against Fair the enough. Dolphins this week. We get, I, we get I, it's back probably against seven zero for me. Yep. All right, and we go eight. six and one after my birthday, week eight, October 29th. They go to Washington, hopefully for the last time to that stadium. I don't know. I don't think they're going to have a new stadium anytime soon. I just wish it was the last time. It won't be. Uh, FedEx Field Ew. at the Commanders. Didn't we Sweet. break a stairwell like last time we were there? The fans did. They broke the, uh, they, they, the guardrail. They, 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 sorry, they got to pay for that. They broke the guardrail. They almost killed Jalen Hurts. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. Well, sorry for our quarterback. But it was held we'll together by zip ties back. and prayers, man. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's oh sweep, man. Right? Washington, do better, man. It's a sweep of the commanders. I wouldn't say we sweep them. Um, in our house, you know, Eagles fans travel. We own that stadium. Um, we get them out of there. Sam we can Howell, find Phil South. Sam Howell just has nightmares. He just has nightmares. All right, dirty jersey. I'm talking confusion. Which way to go? Yeah, Brian Robinson yeah, does what he can. No change, man. Brian Robinson does what he can. Dotson and McLaurin might react off of – they might make some plays. It's not enough, though. We're on a roll at this point. 
We give us seven and one, baby. We're on the roll at this point. Love it. Up. Now, 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 we are getting into the murderer's row of this schedule. Now, ah, the schedule makers did not look out for us on this one. They they kind of made it a little easy for us in weeks one through eight. But now it gets, and of course, me personally, I just I believe in this roster and this coaching staff this much that I'm not personally phased by it, but I can see why. Just having these games back to back wide, it will be potentially an issue for this team, and why the fan base, parts of the fan base, may be worried. But at least one, two, three, four. yeah, six games in a row against you know contenders. So starting with the Cowboys, it'll be another one of those four twenty-five games, late afternoons, tailgate all day, Cowboys, Eagles. People are going to be rowdy. Dak, I mean, this is probably his last chance to prove that he can, you know, be the guy on a winning team. This is his last chance. Oh, this is it, please. Yeah, please. They went and got Trey Lance. They think, I think Jerry thinks he can fix Trey Lance. All right? If anybody's going to go, if it's going to be Dak or McCarthy, Dak will be the first one to go because he's been here the longest and yeah, at some you point, know. you just gotta, you just gotta know what you have, and you know, you take it or leave. So this, this is it for him. No more, no more Zeke. We're gonna, we're gonna see Zeke in week one. Actually, I forgot to mention that. We'll see him in week one in New England, but he, no Zeke. This is gonna be weird. Yeah, that's gonna be weird. Um, Tony Pollard show. Yeah, that that'll um th- that kid. I, I like it better, and I think they they also picked up also uh not. I forgot who it was. Not James Robinson. Jamal Williams. They picked up somebody else. I forgot in the running back bro. But they, they a lot of those names escaped. Man. Yeah, they they tried. Yeah, they tried to spruce it up a little bit. And um, but it's coming down to that, like you said. Um, me personally, even though Jerry said they're gonna ride with Dak, and I mean somebody. No political they, they statements. See, they, yeah, they they see a lot of they see a lot of potential in Trey Lance. Um, I say that we take this game obviously. Um, I just for the fact that we. We're in. We play. We play up against the Cowboys. Um, it's this time of the season where Dak starts slipping because he always slips towards the end of the season. He always gives you the mirror of him being hot, and then he, you know, he becomes Dak. And the Cowboys, like Stephen A. said, they do what they do. And this is around the time they start cowboying, right? So, I say we take this first matchup with them. Um, Jalen takes over. Our running game solidifies itself. Um, Mika Parsons, we just send triple teams at him. He's not enough. But I think we're just going to have to learn how to play through him after a while. But I'm not worried about Dallas because this is the first matchup, mainly because I've never trusted this quarterback, never did, never will. Dak's going to be Dak for us. I appreciate yes, it. Sir. That's 8 and 1. I, listen, that's 9 no for me personally because I just hate mm-hmm. Dallas and can't lose him at home. We can lose him at J-Roll. Can't lose to him at home. Not, yeah. So they get the week ten bye. I love it. I love the late bye. Um, not too early in the season. It's kind of right in the middle of the season. It's not too late either because sometimes when you get a bye that's kind of too late, you know, you kind of have guys that are just like way too gassed and and that momentum injury is done. Momentum yeah, injury. but it, it's right in the middle of the season. I love that. So I think this is our first loss for me personally on the schedule. At the Kansas City Chiefs rematch of Super Bowl yeah. Fifty Seven. Yeah, me too. It's Arrowhead. Monday Night I Football will be extra Close rested. Up. We'll have we'll have we'll be coming off the bye plus an extra day because it's Monday Night Football. So they'll be bet, plenty bet rested. The over. But bet the over. In the no, I, but yeah, yeah, I mean the Super Bowl. I mean the Super Bowl went over. So I mean, yeah, yeah. But I say yeah, there it is. Um, I take nine or two for me. Um, it's, Pat, it's just based off the quarterback. That's it. We got everybody else, man. It's just that dang quarterback. Like, he's the it's, Steph Curry of the NFL. Like, he's just, he just resets the game. And Pat Mahomes, dog. I'm going to hate that game a lot. I am. I'm going to get up for it. You know I'm, they're going you know to show multiple shots of the banner and whatnot and just bring up the Super Bowl. And I'm going to hate that game. I'm not looking forward to that. Yep. I, all I can say is go birds. Um, the, we are analysts first, but at the end of the day, we are Eagles at heart. I don't think so. they've won at Arrowhead since like 2006. Ooh. Or 2005. Maybe it was to 2000. 
five seed. We're praying for an upset. We're Eagles yeah. fans at heart. We're Eagles you, fans you only heart. play there every every other year. Yeah, um, it's it, it, West, used to, it used to be every eight years, but now with the extra game, now we're mm-hmm. playing teams because we both finished first place in our division. So yep. Now it's kind of cutting in, but yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. And not, then on a short week, on a short week, they come back home. Now this is the benefit. You're back home, but now you're playing a Bills team who many will have, and at least in our AFC Championship game predictions, if not the Super Bowl Woo. predictions. So on a short week, I don't like that, but I think it's a win. It'll be by. It, it'll probably take a field goal to win it. Not in two. Not in two. Close game. Josh Allen. No, this could be ten and two for you, right? No, yeah, ten and two. Because we had no, we lost to the yeah, lost to the Chiefs, so we were eight Wait. one, eight and two. Well, it's week twelve. I think you're right, nine and two. Because the no, bye, right? right? Because the bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it just be nine and two for me. Uh, Josh, based solely off Josh Allen, close games. I'm not gonna say he chokes, but he just makes the wrong decision. He makes yeah. the wrong decision in close games. Um, if you can I can't help but think the, about that that Vikings game. Oh my god! Year. I can't help but think about that that Dolphins game where who's their offensive coordinator that broke the camera? <laughs> oh my that god! Was great, that, was that was awesome. That was hilarious. That was timeouts. But Josh Allen, he just tried. Like yeah, bro. Like yeah, like you said, the pick the pack, Peterson. Josh Allen just got to prove that he can play when it gets real. And we're not a team you're gonna roll over like that. You're gonna yeah. have to beat us in the fourth quarter. And that's where Josh Allen has to prove himself. And I think Man. he can just take, look I think the, he I think he continues to struggle in the fourth. I think it take, like you said, it comes down to the fourth. Potentially, and I think two, it might, potentially two Super Bowl previews back to back weeks. Yeah, how about that? That's, that's crazy. And speaking of, that. you know, we had we we have our Super Bowl rematch. Two weeks after the Super Bowl rematch, our NFC Championship game rematch, a game that a lot of people have circled on their schedules, a game that the schedule makers wanted to schedule late, a game they probably should have scheduled early because you just never know what's going to happen. You know, yeah, quarterback situation over there, and guys getting hurt and whatnot. You know, but 49ers, San Francisco 49ers, coming back to the link for the first time since the NFC Championship game where they got absolutely destroyed because they wanted to put a tight end on the best. Pass rusher on the, in the edge league that year yeah. in the league, best edge pass rusher in the league. You want to put a tight end on your funeral? I, mean, I think it's well, not literally, but with all due respect, I think it's going to be the same result. Whether who it doesn't matter who's that quarterback, even if Brock plays the entire game, I still got blowout, and it's because the Eagles are going to just be that wired up for that game because all. Can I curse? Do I have the All the shit that the Bullshit. 49ers, from their organization to their fans, like, look, at, the fans can talk, whatever. The fans can feel a certain type of way. No, they can't. My cousins can't talk. If you want, well, my cousins I mean, they see can't talk. Can't watch it. Shut they up. Can't they can't talk. Fans. Cousins, check your mouth. They're 49ers fans. They can't they can't. You. They can't talk. But it's, it's even worse when their organization is doing it. And yeah, not it's just worse. the players. Yeah. Deeper coach. Oh, yeah, your coach, yeah. Shanahan talking. John Lynch talking. Like, your your whole organization making excuses. Who who we'll who'd you put on Hassan Reddick? Exactly. There's nobody you else fault but your own. It wasn't a cheap shot. He didn't target him. He went for the ball. He knocked the ball out of his hand. And, and the process of Brock trying to throw the ball, his elbow wow. snapped back. Don't Sorry, it us. happens. It's football. Clean hit. He didn't even hit him. He went for the football. He didn't even hit him. Well, I, I guess he did tackle him at the same time, but he went after mm-hmm. the ball first, and it snapped his elbow back. It's football. And then Josh Johnson suffered a concussion. He wasn't going to win him the game anyways. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. He wasn't going to win him the game anyways. The game was already over once Brock got hurt. The game was already over just because. But it would have it would have been a lot closer with Brock in there. But the Eagles are winning that game no matter what. Let's just call it. Let's just call it what it is. Keep it a buck. Eagles are winning that game regardless. I like it. Uh, it was going to be closer, but they were going to win regardless. And I think the right. same result happens here in Week 13 of the regular season. Moving on, rematch with the Dallas Cowboys. Sunday night football, the second I, of two Sunday night football games, their last primetime game on the schedule. 
and Jerry World. Did they finally, you know, break the losing streak at Jerry World? I they, would say we. I want to say we get snug, but Jalen. Last time, who we had? We had Gardner Minshew and Jalen last man. year. Last year, that was such a winnable game. Jalen's in that game. We win by two scores. Jalen's in that game. They Jaylen. win by at least ten points. At least ten points. Jalen's playing that game, and it's crazy because and don't get me started on that third and thirty. I, I want to say, we pull, yeah, yeah, whatever. I, I want to pull it out. I want to say we pull it out, but I want to say we pull it out. But Dak at home, I'll, I'll give it a snub. I'll go 10-3. and three. I'll give it a snub, and I'm not really 100% on that. I'll give it a snub because Dak has his moments at home, 10-3. and three. And Tony Pollard, Michael, Ga- Michael, Michael Gallup, they're not that. I feel like I'm at like 11 The Cowboys always right steal one from us at least once. They would still was we steal so, one. So I'm, I, I, want to regret, I might regret this crap. I want to regret this crap, but I want to say we split. I I got ten and three. I got ten and three, and that's only because of how we play in Jerry World sometimes. Fair enough. Fair enough. I got ten and All three. All right, another 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 tough matchup again because of history. I talked about history with the Jets. History is not on our side when we play the Seattle Seahawks, especially yeah. when we go to to Seattle. Um, I think it's Lumen Field now. It used to be called Quest Field. It, that stadium has had a couple of names, but it's right now it's Lumen Field. And Geno Smith, he had a like a crazy turnaround. Just in, in one year, he just the year. again. I don't know. Took him ten back years. From. Coming took back him eight being seasons. mediocre. Took I him eight like seasons. That. But he, he had did. a bunch of different coordinators and different coaches. This would be a most improved. Game. This would be a most improved. Game. In football, because he's the most yeah. improved player of the year. He's not the comeback player by the year. far, but they don't have an right. award for it, so they have to, you know, whatever. So, Nitpicking. Shoot, man, he made the top 100. <laughs> Shout out to Gina. Yeah, yeah, he deserved that. He deserved, he deserved that. Um, Coach and that Carroll. young secondary told him that young secondary Pete Carroll works good with young players running the football. Kenneth Walker's scary. If I'm I can bad. be honest with you. This is the team that I kind of have winning the NFC West. Like, I can see okay. them winning the West over, over the Niners. Okay, okay, I believe like, that. And, you know, maybe you know, I just kind of have like a hate thing with the Niners going on. Well, but listen, it's not Seattle. It, it's not crazy. That Jackson Smith and Jim, man, when he comes back, because he's hurt right now. But when he comes oh, back, yeah. boy, and, and, and Kenneth Walker boy. too. That, that's the one I said. When Kenneth we Walker, he's on my team. I have three fantasy Not, teams. He's on one. Yeah, I couldn't get him all. Kenneth three. Walker the third. On Kenneth there, Walker the third is going to definitely be a add problem. There. And that's what I meant to say. Rashad Penny when, when Rashad Penny got hurt got. last year, it wasn't uh, Kenneth Gainwell. I said Kenneth Gainwell. I meant to say Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker after yeah. Rashad Penny got hurt. That's gotcha. the kid that took over. But yeah, Kenneth Walker. Um, I said we pull it out though. I said we get this one. I said we get this one in Seattle. I'm taking it's not on our side, but I, 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 I not on our side. But we it's not, what? they're not the same have, Seahawks teams of the past. So, but we don't have losing streaks. We no. always get we no. always give up. We don't even we don't even the Super Bowl losers. year. Even the Super Bowl year, we lost at Seattle in the Super Bowl year. Like that team couldn't win in and Seattle. Win. So. I think it's been, I'm going off the pattern of because I got us losing a week before, and we don't go on too many losing streaks. We no. lose, we come out pissed the next week. We come out yeah. pissed the next week. I'm interested. I'm interested in that Seahawks game. I am a hunt. DK Metcalf is going to be a heck of a guard for, for big play. I'm I'm very interested in that game. I love that. I, I give it a so. toss up. I give it a toss up, but based off the fact that good teams don't have losing streaks, I I give us that. I give us the slight edge on that. I give us the slight edge. I respect good that. teams don't have these losing streaks. So we're winding down here. Three games left to go. Giants, Christmas Day. I will not be there because it'll be too cold, and I want to be in the house with my family on Christmas, so I will ah. not be there. <laughs> but it should be a fun game. I'll be telling you. On Christmas? Oh, yeah, you better believe it. I'll be in there and getting the presents after. My brother gave me a look. He a Giants fan. He gave me a look right now. I, I got it. We got it. We got to show up for them. We got to show up for them. Yeah, I mean, it's just like with, with, the, with, with us and the Seahawks, it's like the opposite with the Giants. It's just we have their number right now. Seahawks you know have our number. We have yeah. their number. So, I mean, just yep. – and then we have the Jets' number. It's just speaking on history, I feel like we have that one. 
Yeah, sorry, bro. And, sorry, Josh. And, and speaking of that, W, baby, on Christmas, the kids get their presents. I get drunk. Me personally, I don't care for Christmas no more because I'm just a jaded adult now and I don't get presents anymore. I just get gift cards, so that'll be my gift, that game. Where's the love? Oh, gift cards. And that's that, more. Just between that and basketball, that's going to be a great day of sports. Oh, that's what I'm going to be glued to the TV. America I mean, the Sixers, the, the Sixers America play at 8 o'clock. Find ways to make money. America six, keep finding ways to entertain. I posted this on my stories a, a few weeks ago. I'm like, I was posting it. It was like, it was like a schedule of all the games, NFL and NBA. So it's like as soon as our game with the Giants turns off, it'll be the Sixers. I think against the Heat. TV's going off. Sorry, TV. <laughs> Sixers channel. Whatever. Whatever's that late football game. That's what I'll be tuning into. I'll tune into the <laughs> eight o'clock football game. The six. I have a. I, yeah, Sixers are kind of on my last nerve right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, nothing. Not to make this. A, not to make this a basketball episode, but you know. Now this is a tricky game. This is a game that it's going to be. It should be a very emotional game, but it depends on what the on what the standings look like. Now, if the Eagles, as we all hope, you know, if they have the division wrapped up and the number one seat wrapped up, this game might not matter. But if they don't, boy, oh boy, are the Cardinals in trouble? If the Eagles don't have the number one seat wrapped up, boy, oh boy, are the Cardinals in trouble? I'm going to say this again. If the Eagles don't have the number one seed wrapped up, boy, oh boy, are, is Jonathan Gannon in trouble? Because first of all, the Cardinals, they don't look like a good team because they're not a good team. They're projected to be the worst team in the NFL. They're going to have the number one pick next year. That's just being, that's just, you know, just based off of, you know, the depth chart. Five, zero. Fifty. I want 50, a 50 burger. burger. Yeah, we said just James, knock on wood. I want fifty on the board. If we don't score fifty points in any other game this year, I want fifty on their heads, Mister Defense. Damn it, I want sixty. He admitted that it was his fault. That just doesn't happen. That just doesn't happen in the NFL. He admitted the Super Bowl was his fault. He admitted I think, that, Craig. I think that that was taken out of context. He he. I think he said that sarcastically, but either way, it is his fault. Whether he believes so or not, it is his fault. Um, yeah, I, I don't like that man. I don't like him. W. He, was, he was looking, he was, he was interviewing for that job in the weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. He should have been focused on the Chiefs. He should have been focused. His head was out of the game. His head was out of the game. He was scared, he, he was scared to blitz. He just did. And it, the thing that killed me, his first interview as head coach, I think he they told him like to stay that. on the plane. Like, don't even get on the plane. Stay Like, there. just go, bro. First interview. He's so weird, bro. He's just so... Pew, pew. He's just so weird. I'll never forget him. Pew, pew. Like, I was so bad. You have that fire in your gut? Let's go. Yeah, like, let's go. I'm you like, have that fire in your gut? Bro. Like, like oh you're horrible. God. Like, it's... like what, bro? Like, you're not... T- nobody... I'd be surprised if any of the, uh, the freaking team... Anybody on the team, like... Hate is a strong word. Or trust them. Like, if I was a Cardinals fan, I feel sorry for y'all, man. Like... Hate is a very like, strong word, okay? And I don't... I don't say it... I mean, I hate the Cowboys. And I hate their fans. That's the word vibe. I don't even... I don't even think I hate the Giants and the Commanders. They're just like, I don't like them. And the Commanders, I just feel bad. Strong for this case. Strong but Jonathan Gannon... I have nothing against the Cardinals in their organization, I mean... I still yeah, hate them for the ball walk of a short pier. I still hate the Cardinals for the 9 championship game, but that's just, you know, I, was, I had PTSD. Yeah, PTSD as a kid from the, Well, it was just one man, Fitz. He killed us by himself, single hand. It was yeah, it was it was Fitz, and I respect Fitz. But I don't respect Jonathan Gannon. I hate this man. I hate him. I didn't yeah. even like him throughout the season. I didn't like him during the season when we were rolling. Cause he was just suspect to me. I feel like high end talent was saving his ass. Mm-hmm. CJ Gardner Johnson, Darius Slay, mm-hmm. 70 sacks. I think high end talent was saving his butt. Mm-hmm. I saw right. And they got BG, exposed when it mattered hard. Absolute most. Like, yeah, we just had a heck of a roster. We could have coached that. When it mattered the absolute most, he got exposed. He got beat on the exact same play twice and they mirrored it. They ran to different sides of the field, but they ran the same play in the red zone twice. He didn't blitz until the Chiefs got into the, the, the like inside the 15, inside the 10. Now you're sending blitzes when the, when you need to be covering the goal line because the field is short and you need to just 
cover the goal line. Like, why are you sending? Why are you playing blitz man? We should be playing zone in the red zone. But when you're when you're on the you know at midfield, you know you're sending four man rushes on third down when you need to be blitzing the best quarterback in the game. Oh my god! Oh my god! The Eagles couldn't get a single stop. Now, now I'm talking about Super Bowl again. The Eagles couldn't get a single burger. stop in the second half. I, I want them to put 60 on their head. Six. Screw this guy. Next week, screw this with guy. That being, with, with that being said, it's the season finale. That's the home finale, by the way. So that, that'll be a, a fun way to end the home schedule. Season finale. Let's wrap this thing up. At oh, the Giants, this game probably shouldn't matter. So it'll be a loss for that exact reason because Marcus Mariota will be starting that quarterback. <laughs> Tanner McKee. Tanner McKee, he, he's going to get some second half reps. And he's gonna no, he'll good, start the quarterback. Oh, well, I hope so. He probably won't. <laughs> I hope so, but he probably won't. I'm telling you, Tanner McKee is getting the number two spot. It's in the midway. I, the I hope so. I just don't think they're going to embarrass Marcus like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're going to embarrass him. I don't think they're going to embarrass him like that, but they should. Because he's, oh, not, he's he had a Netflix not good. special? Excuse me, because he had a QB. Oh, he was on a QB. Netflix it's not even special. that. It's just, a, it's just like the name recognition. That's all. <laughs> Marcus Mariota is just a name right now. He won the Heisman Trophy, or he was runner-up, and he was like second round, yeah, you're second right. overall pick. Maybe I'm James. Maybe I'm it's just name recognition. So, what's your final record? What does that put your record at? Thirteen or four? Uh, or uh, four fourteen three. Four, yeah, four. Thirteen or four. Uh, what I had the Giants with that loss. Because uh, I think you had the Cowboys and... being your third loss. So yeah, this last game with the Giants, oh yeah, the toss up. Yep, thirteen to four. I definitely did have thirteen to four. I did. I had I, I, I'm looking. The, tough, the heart and you says, had. The heart says fifteen and two, but the mind is okay. saying fourteen and three, thirteen and four. Is fourteen and three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But th- I like thirteen and four. Fourteen thirteen and wins. Doable. Thirteen 14 wins will be enough to get that, that number toss one up. In, that toss up in Jerry World is not. It's still a toss up. That's not guaranteed. Like fourteen and three is still doable, but I'm gonna go thirteen and four. Well, Either way, that, that's enough to win a division by far, and, and it'll be enough to get the up. one seed because the NFC is just yeah. You know, it's a little, and and then the, the only it's a and the, the few contending teams that might come out, we we're gonna have the the top topper doing it. Absolutely. Sorry, so, so, Eagles. Any playoff predictions? You think how, how far do you think the Eagles go? I say they finish that, the job this year. They have to. I want to hold this roster. I I definitely want. I think Jalen Hurts is too hungry, man. He's too hungry. Yeah, I just want. I just want the same thing as last year: home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and we'll just take it from there because we do good. I mean, they get the number one seed; they're going to Vegas. That's not. I just yeah. I just. It's just. just What do they do when they get to Vegas? That's the question for me. And who do they play? No idea. It could be Kansas City. It could be Cincinnati. It could be Buffalo. It could be. It could be the Jets. It could be the the Baltimore Ravens. That's my sneaky AFC champion pick, by the way. That's my sneaky pick for the AFC. You know, everybody's everybody's looking at Kansas City and, and Cincinnati for a good reason. Buffalo for a good reason. But Kansas City, my I've sneaky pick, my it's sneaky Baltimore. pick are the Ravens. Yeah, that I'm offense. not mad at that. I've called them out for a reason. Bengals. I'm they gonna just, love they that. They just Ravens signed Joe to five year. Joe just signed some money five year. So yeah, it's a lot of competition in the eight. Just just the aesthetic of having Jalen and Lamar in the Super Bowl. That's gonna feed. That's you know the whole hood gonna be tuned into that one, bro. That's whole hood. Generation. Say, last year, last year the is entire hood is gonna be tuned in for that one. Yeah, last year is about the two dual threat now. black quarterbacks, bro. I'm telling you, if that that'll happens, be history. Last, that'll last be black year history right culture. there. Yeah, last year was in about February. the culture. Last year was about the culture, but this year, if that happens, it's gonna be about the urban culture. If that bro, were to happen, that 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 would be black history right there. I, I would love to see it. I would love to see a Joe versus Jalen matchup as well. I would love to see a Josh versus Jalen matchup. I would love to see a, a Jalen and Patrick rematch. Either one of those matchups are good for me. Any one of the four. You know, I, I'm, yeah. not moved by the, I'm not moved by the Chargers. I'm not moved by the Jazz. I don't, the Jets, you know, Aaron Rodgers is there, but the Jets are going to jet at some point. It's kind of like the AFC Cowboys. Like they're going to screw themselves over at some point. So, I mean, but, you know. I think the Eagles get back. I don't know who they play. I think they get back. They go to Vegas. The turf won't be slippery this time. It'll be the right turf. And they get the job done. They won't have John again in the plane. They get the job done, man. All right. How do you feel about that? 
<laughs> go birds. Go birds, baby. Go birds. This episode went over. We went like a half hour over because we all had to do all good. <laughs> We be this has been episode 128 of the Zone Podcast. Make sure you check out episode 127. Uh, me, Greg, and Seam, we talk a little wrestling. You know, we talk about the untimely passing of Bray Wyatt. And, you know, we talk about, you know, his impact oh, that he had on us. Yes. And uh, we talk about CM Punk getting fired. He's been out of wrestling home again, this guy. And, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be notified for whenever we upload a new video. I am John Wooten. That's just, just Johnny. Johnny, baby. And once again, like you just like the man said, go birds. Have a good night. Go birds.